So this over here is the entry CPU for the Threadripper Pro lineup on AMD systems right now. The 5965WX, it's got 24 cores and you might be saying, 24 cores? Is that even good? Because I can get 24 cores on Intel 13900K, which is uh, about three times cheaper than this CPU. Yes, three times cheaper. You can get three i9s for the price of this one. And then the next questions would be like, wait a second, what am I even paying for here? And is it good for creators? Well, all these questions will be answered in this video, but for now, there's only one question. Who's the sponsor of this video? Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license use the same code tn20 to get a 30 percent off check out whokies.com in the video description below now then this is not a new cpu by any means but this is the first time that i've had hands on this and i think this is still very important for creators to check out because it offers some of the features that are still relevant right now on the market and can't quite get with anything else that's out there plus it might look a little bit more affordable than some of the other things out there. So let's talk about the specs and some of the CPUs we're going to be comparing in this video just in comparison. So this 5965WX has 24 cores, 48 threads, which means it's got two cores per thread and all of these are performance cores. There are no E cores or hybrid architecture. The max turbo frequency is 4.5 gigahertz, which interestingly is exactly the same max turbo frequency that we get on the 5995WX CPU which is the 64 core version of this CPU. The max PCI generation is PCI Gen 4. We've got 128 PCIe lanes, and that is where this CPU is different from the likes of 3900K or 7950X. As you can see, the Intel CPUs have 20 PCIe lanes and the 7950X 24. So this guy here has a ton of PCIe lanes. If you work in a scenario where you need a lot of expandable NVMe storage or a lot of graphics power or a lot of expandability in your PCIe slots, then you're not going to be losing the bandwidth or performance because you don't have enough PCIe lanes. You can fill all the expansion slots on your motherboard with GPUs or whatever, and you're not going to be limited to that PCIe lane bandwidth. That's why this processor is very, very interesting. But the maximum RAM capacity supported here is two terabytes, which is exactly the same as the 5995WX. Eight channel memory. We have 128 megabytes of L3 cache, which is quite a bit more than on the 3900K and double what we have on the 7950X, but also half what we have on the 5995WX. The TDP is exactly the same as the 5995WX. We don't have an iGPU inside and it's based on the Zen 3 architecture on a seven nanometer process from TSMC. And right now you can pick it up roughly around $1,900, which as you can see, looking at the comparison is uh, quite a bit more expensive than the mainstream high-end processes. Now, if you want to check out the test bench setup and how I tested um, all of these different TPUs, then I'm going to leave them all linked in the description below so you can check them out or pick up any of these CPUs. Let's have a look at some benchmarks, but before we've got to mention the memory controller because it's got eight channel memory and when you populate all of the eight channels, you're not splitting their memory channels what you usually get on a 3900K or 7950X with a four slot motherboard. Even though the motherboards on the mainstream have four slots, that doesn't mean that individual slot has its dedicated memory channel from the CPU. But on this platform, for example, the ASUS WRX 80E Sage Wi-Fi motherboard, you can see eight slots in there, individual, all of these slots have dedicated memory channel to the CPU, which is crazy, crazy bandwidth. And as you can see, even though it supports 3200 megahertz speed for those channels, it's not going to be capped lower if you fill all of these slots. For example, on the 3900K, even though it supports 5600 megahertz on DDR5, if you fill all of the four slots, uh, the memory controller 
actually can't keep up with that because we were splitting the channels. We've got two sticks per channel. It gets overwhelmed and drops it down to 4,000. Now, this is not the maximum what it can do. This is the safety rated memory controller speed. What Intel says, look, we can promise, that's their like promise, what they're saying for the spec, that if you put four sticks in, they will run at least 4,000. You might be getting them to run faster. And the same here with this thread repair. You can fill all of the eight slots. They will run at least 3,200 megatransfers per second. You're welcome to use 3,600 kit, 4,000 kit, it might work as well, but then there's lots of other things that play a role in actually making the higher frequency RAM work in those sockets. And one more clarifying thing about the memory controller speeds here is that this supports TDR4, whereas the mainstream processes like the 7950X and 13900K, for example, they support DDR5. But this only supports DDR4, which has lower speeds, as you can see there. But now power consumption. The 5965WX pulls 286 watts, which is um, quite a bit more than the 7950X and a bit less than the 13900K, actually. The 13900K, when enabling multi-core enhancement from BIOS, it lets the CPU run 304 watts and 100 degrees, which is absolutely crazy. But interestingly, the 24 core and 64 core 5000 Threadripper Pro CPUs, they pull exactly the same wattage, doesn't matter if you get more cores or less cores. For example, if you look at the Ryzen 9 or Ryzen 7, the wattage gets down as well. But here, 24 cores, they pull the same wattage when you're utilizing the multi-core workflow in Cinebench R23, for example. So then, Cinebench R23. The single core performance isn't anything that impressive. It is slightly faster than the 5995WX, but it's not comparable to the 7950X or 3900K, what we have there. Bear in mind, this is a bit of an older architecture, Zen 3 compared to the Zen 4, what we have on the 7950X. The multi-core speed here though is impressive. The 16 core 7950X is 7.5% slower and 13900K that also has 24 cores, but they're hybrid cores. They don't have 48 thread. It only has 32 threads, pretty much neck to neck with this 24 core thread ripper, but is actually pulling quite a bit more wattage than what we have here. The 5995WX is on another league and is 78% faster. So here we kind of see where these processes slot in. The Threadware has much better multi-core performance, but the single core performance is a little bit lower, so that's interesting. In Geekbench 5, we see very similar things, although interestingly, the 5995WX has 15% faster single core score, which is interesting, even though the kind of boost clock speeds are the same, but for some reason, Geekbench likes it a bit more on the 64 core. But the 13900K is 2% faster in the multi-core performance, and that is because the Geekbench 5 um, benchmark doesn't count the threads of the CPUs. And because 3900K has some of the efficiency cores where you only have single thread per core, it performs slightly faster. But the 7950X with 16 cores is about 7.5% slower. Now Blender and CPU rendering. The 16 core 7950X is actually 2.6% faster in the monster scene about 9% slower in the junk shop scene and about 1.6% slower in the classroom scene, which is actually impressive and shows the improvement on Zen 4 architecture compared to the Zen 3 architecture, which we have on the thread over here, that even a 16 core processor on Zen 4 is able to keep up with a 24 core Zen 3 processor. The 3900K is about 0.5% faster in the monster scene, but 11 and 5% slower in the junk shop and classroom scenes. Now, interestingly, the 64 core Threadripper Pro is literally more than double the performance on all of these scenes, which is very good scaling in the Blender. So the more cores and more threads you have, it is amazing. But bear in mind, if you are a creator who needs a lot of RAM, for example, and a lot of GPU expansion in Blender, you might actually find that this 5965WX 
interesting because it's much more affordable than the 5995WX, for example. Let's take a look at photo editing now. And in Photoshop, the 7950X is about 17.4% faster in the overall score. And that is due to the single core performance because uh, Photoshop loves the single core uh, performance there. The 13900K is about 30% faster which is amazing and the 5995wx the 64 core is about 6.5 percent slower so for photoshop i wouldn't really get this cpu in lightroom classic the story is slightly different the 7950x is about eight percent faster in the overall scores and 10 and six percent faster in the active and passive scores so the ryzen 9 actually makes quite a bit sense here the 3900k is faster as well than the 24 core thread repair about 15 um, to 18 percent faster there but interestingly the 64 core thread ripper is slower than the 24 core thread ripper now this 24 core thread ripper is actually very good at the passive score as you can see there now not quite as good as some of the mainstream offerings there but if you just want a good lightroom performance then perhaps upgrading this 24 core to 64 core doesn't make that much sense in lightroom classic premiere pro the 7950X now, the 16 core CPU, is about 5% slower in the extended and standard overall score. Interestingly, the live playback is about 20% slower. It's because those 24 cores with all of the multi-threading can play back better codecs, whether it's raw or higher resolution codecs, than the 16 core, which exhausts himself. Now, the 3900K is about 17 to 26% faster, and the extended and standard live playback, as you can see, is quite a bit faster because of the Intel Quick Sync, what we have in there. The iGPU does make a big difference in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, actually, in the timeline performance. The 64 core 5995, WX that's many times more expensive isn't that much faster actually in Premiere Pro and the 24 core might seem like a sweet spot so if you're looking for crazy GPU power and very good CPU performance then this guy here is a good option but at the same time if you look at the 7950X or Intel i9 you see that those guys are even cheaper and perform even better now after effects the Ryzen 9 is about 11% faster Interestingly, the GPU is about 28% faster, even though we're using exactly the GPU. But for some reason, the CPU actually becomes the bottleneck of the GPU, looking at these benchmarks here. The 3900K is about 25% faster, and the 5995WX is actually 5% slower in the overall score, even though the multi-core and GPU score is faster, but the tracking render and RAM preview are actually slower. So overall, the 24 core again performs a little bit better than the 5995WX. Now, last video editing application, the DaVinci Resolve, the Ryzen 9 is 13 and 20% faster in the extended and standard overall scores. Interestingly, GPU effects, even though with the same GPU, is 40% faster. So looks like the single core performance will be the bottleneck of the GPU performance in some of those video editing applications. The 13900K is 14 to 21% faster in the um, overall scores, but is actually slower like the Ryzen 9 on the 4K and 8K media scores. The 5995WX is quite a bit faster here on DaVinci Resolve because DaVinci Resolve really utilizes all of the power of the 64 cores. About 14 to 15% faster in the overall scores and 17 and 10% faster in the 4K and 8K media scores. So perhaps in the very high end level of things and when budget is not an option, the 5995WX is the best CPU you can get for DaVinci Resolve. Now let's take a look at one more 3D application and that is V-Ray and here the 16 core Ryzen 9 is 4% slower which is actually quite impressive when you consider it's so many times cheaper than the 5965WX and then the 13900K is about 11% slower but the 5995WX 64 core is double the performance of this 24 core in V-Ray. So in conclusion, what are we saying then? Is this 24 core Threadripper actually worth it or not? And that very much depends in your workflow. Now, if you need processor or platform that has a lot of RAM, 
support a lot of PCIe expansion, whether that is a GPU power, um, storage, expansion cards and different things, capture cards, and you're running out of PCIe lanes on the mainstream Ryzen 9s or Intel i9s, then the 24 core Threadripper Pro is absolutely amazing, amazing option there. Also in 3D, perhaps when you need a lot of RAM and CPU power as well as GPU power to render out, but still want to, you know, keep your budget down a little bit and don't want to hit five figures, then this is again, very good option there because of the PCIe lane support. I guess the bottom line where I would draw is if you need more than one GPU or expansion in your PC, then the Threadripper Pro 5965WX is a very, very good option, especially now when it's comp down in price, what it was actually launched. You might be able to pick that up very easily. And for creators, it might make a lot of sense. Now, the question for you is, would this Threadripper Pro make sense to you? And would you choose the Threadripper Pro 24 core or the 16 core Ryzen 9 Instead, which one would you go for? And before we talk about the best bank for work creator PC, I wanna ask you one thing. There is something wrong in this video, and I wanna see if you actually noticed it. There's, this, there's two things majorly wrong in this video, but I wanna see if someone picked it up. Let me know if you picked this up. You might have to zoom in a little bit and look around on the frame, but uh, if you find it, comment down below, and uh, you know, I'll upvote it then. Uh, who finds the actual mistake in this video. If you're a creator and you wanna build the best bank for bulk creator PC and you don't quite have money for this Threadripper, then I will have builds in the description below where you can build the whole PC, everything in the PC for less than what this one CPU costs to you. So whatever your budget is, there is a video down in the description below for you. Go check it out completely free. I'll explain everything down there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.